Well, good afternoon. Welcome to Business Wits Life Shine Generosity Coaching Webinar, Relationships, Guiding Principles for Work and Life Success. And it's the second time we've done this one. And we did a survey this time to get some feedback from the from our audience, so to speak, as to you know what does this work and life success thing mean? What are some of the problems that we're experiencing? And you know, clearly, I've written a couple of emails lately. Mental health, uh, substance abuse, homelessness—I mean, they're rampant today, more so than ever before. Um, and one of the challenges I think we have is that as an entrepreneur or a career professional. Um, well, realistically, nobody works 40 hours a week anymore, right? Um, it's 73% of the people that responded to our survey work more than uh, 40 hours a week and sometimes more than 50 hours a week. And what that can do is it can lead to things like, you know, burnout. And if it doesn't lead to burnout, it could lead to some mental health issues like depression. And for some people, it leads to things like substance abuse. So we had 80% of our respondents express concerns about mental health. 100%, every single respondent said they feel some stress at work. And I think that's pretty normal. But but um, in this case, we did find that it wasn't all the time. There was some stress, but it's rare. 93% uh, of the respondents were concerned about achieving a healthy work-family balance. 34% uh, of those, no, 34% of the total weighed in as... They were usually and always concerned about work-life balance. 67% um, indicated that time freedom was really important. 47% have experienced or are concerned with burnout. And so those are big things, right? And that's why we're putting this together. Um, what studies have shown is that when we surround ourselves with community, when we're a part of relationships and we can talk to people, we can work through our, we can share our issues and challenges with others, that it's uh, it's outstanding. This is the process for getting better at mental health. So I'm going to go ahead and just walk through this process. Um, there'll be some time for um, some interaction. I've got two of my team members here, Terry and Nathan. Uh, you may hear from them. If you have any questions, please just put your questions in chat. They'll bring it up to me. So uh, again, let's get started. Relationships, guiding principles for work and life success. And really, it's about it's about life success, right? Life is about life. Life isn't about business. Business is a supporting vehicle for the life that you want to live. All right, a little bit about me before we jump in. Um, some of you know me. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Business Wit, and I built the Lifeshine Generosity Coaching Package. I am a recovering corporate executive. I spent 30 years in that really giant uh, multi-billion dollar corporate space with companies like TRW and Bank of America and Emerson Electric um, really have dived into the business coach, not, not life changing, right? When, so when, you're, when your business changes, uh, when you have more time, when you have more revenue, it changes lives. Starts with the owner, uh, it transitions to the family, transitions to the employees, transitions to everybody, every stakeholder that's, that's involved there. I am a master's program graduate. A uh, spiritual warrior in the sense that, you know, I am, you know, I believe strongly in my faith. And that's actually where the generosity coach component came from. Uh, biblically, generosity shows up quite a bit. But the important thing to know is that you don't have to have a religion of any sort to be generous. There are lots of people out there that are generous just because it's the right thing to do. And, and that's my thing, right? So it has nothing to do with, with, with uh, you know, whether you're a Christian or following the Bible. If you are great. You know, we can have different conversations, but uh, generosity is the most important thing. I wrote a book called Checkmate, Winning Tactics for Translating Ideas into Money. That was published in 2017. I host a podcast called the Lifeshine Generosity Project. And then I host this uh, group called the Business Growth Forum, where we get together with business owners and we strategize and talk about different issues and challenges and solutions. Uh, once again, you know, life is about life. Life isn't about business or career. Your business or career is a supporting vehicle for the life that you want to live. Nobody, nobody in the history of mankind on their deathbed says, I wish I worked more hours. Nobody does. They say they wish they'd spent more time with people. They wish they'd spent more time with family. They wish they had spent more time experiencing life, not necessarily work and business. 
All right, so that's enough about me. Let's jump into a little bit more about uh, business sweat. You know, we dream big, right? We, I, we want to empower the human spirit by believing in people and championing their dreams. My job as a coach is to help people achieve their dreams. Life shine is, you know, based on Matthew 5, 16. It's a verse in the Bible that says, let your light shine bright before your fellow man on your good deeds. And that's what, that's what we do. That's what I do is I help my clients shine their light bright. Oops, I think I went too far. No, oh, I guess I did. I'm sorry. Um, all right. So check this out. If you search Google for entrepreneur personal relationships, I think if you looked at career personal relationships too, you see something similar, right? You'll come across some really interesting articles, but clearly work-life balance, harmony is not considered one of the defining characteristics of the life of an entrepreneur or the career professional, but perhaps it should be. And Terry's going to share uh, some information, a, a link to a word cloud uh, so that we can get some information about this harmony type thing and make sure that we cover the right categories. So basically, as John said, we're, we're going to create a word cloud to capture some thought on work-life balance during work. And this is basically a visual representation of ideas surrounding um, this topic. Okay. So we're supposed to now type in our word. I see how that works now. So clearly, uh, just by looking at this, I mean, there's some challenges if we don't have our work and life in balance. And so today our presentation is really about, you know, what does that look like? How do I do that uh, to give you some, some guidance and some tools on how to make that happen and how to make that happen effectively? All right. So um, thank you, Terry. Um, mm -hmm. Frustrated imbalance, difficult, strained, depressed, stress, limited, inability, unhappiness. Those are, none of those are good things. None of those are good things. So we're going to try and address those as we get through our slide deck. Again, if you have any questions, just put a question in the chat and Terry or Nathan will jump in and uh, guide me in that direction. All right. So I'm going to go back to sharing the screen. Um, okay. Right. So. Um, I think I'm sure I'm sharing the wrong screen. I got to do this again. I do this all the time. Um, this is the one I want to share. Okay, so now we're back on the right screen. Um, yeah, so so work life balance harmony. It's not considered a defining characteristic, but if you think about why people went to be an entrepreneur, or why people went down the career path, it is so that you could create the life that you ultimately want to live. And what's crazy is sometimes that means you got to go a little, little on the high side early so that you can have the success results late. But there's some things that we can do in the meantime that allow us to be able to serve the business and not give up and trade um, and trade the work, make, trade the life balance, so to speak. All right, so this is... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I relate to this. I think you guys probably do too. You know, on your phone, got a computer in front of you. For me, I have two screens. I've got a tablet. I've got two tablets and I've got a phone and sometimes they're all going along. So 24 seven work requirements uh, and a passion that might border on obsession can be difficult to balance against the focus and presence required to maintain a healthy relationship, maintain healthy relationships. So let's talk about this. We're gonna talk about the work-life balance myth. Right. And and one of the problems with this is that um, <clears throat> it is just that it is a myth. It's sort of like it, there's this assumption that it's 50 50. Right. First, it implies that there's a difference between work and life, which really for entrepreneurs is really true. I know when I started my business, um, I did that because I wanted to be able to go see my son's football games. I wanted to go see my daughter's activities. And they were midday because they were students. They were in they were in school, and uh, as an entrepreneur running my own business, uh, in my career I couldn't do that. I couldn't take the time off to go see them. Um, but as an entrepreneur, I could say, okay, I'm going to go down and catch the football game at three o'clock, and then I would just work extra hours later that night. Um, the other thing is it sort of only measures output, which is 
pretty exhausting. And it implies that your energy can be divided like a pie, like, like you could actually split it. <clears throat> My apologies there. Um, the phrase work-life balance really loses all meaning. Uh, once you become an entrepreneur or once you, you know, enter into that, say that service professional space, you know, where you're an attorney or a CPA, imagine a CPA during tax time. It's just a crazy world, right? Uh, for small business owners, service providers, service professionals, there's a constant need to find equilibrium. And that's the word that we're going to focus on here today, equilibrium between a demanding career and a vital personal life. Right? So we said it implies there's a difference between work and life. It only measures output, and it implies that your energy can be divided. Now, here's what we're looking for. Right? We're looking for this thing where we've got life and we can spend some time with our family. And then there's this one, right? And I've been there. I'm certain you've all been there uh, working late at night on the bed. So we're not disturbing the kids because they're sleeping, right? So whether you're a solopreneur or you employ 25 workers, the pull of business, it's it never goes away, right? There's always things to do. It's a never ending cycle. Right. So to be successful in both arenas doesn't mean you have to have equal hours at home and in the office. It just means that you have to have a rhythm that fulfills both sides. And we call this harmony. We call this harmony. Right. So here are a few things that 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 help us to uh, ensure our life is harmony. And in this particular case, Terry's got another word cloud for us. Right. So what does harmony mean for you? Oh, this is one of the reasons why I like the word cloud, right? Because you can see that balance and peace show up even stronger. Um, and so that's 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 what we're really looking for, balance and peace. Now, and, and you know, beautiful music when things are in harmony, right? Unity, wholeness, consistency. All right, so let's explore this harmony concept and talk about um, how do we how do we actually make that happen? So I'm gonna take the screen once again. So are we on harmony? I appreciate your participating in our word cloud there. It's one of the things that's a new thing that we've kind of just developed that helps us get some some different some engagement with the audience uh, and allows us to keep moving the program together, moving moving the program along. Okay, so when we talk about harmony, this is sort of you know we're talking about blending the parts together, right? So in music. You know, the no one instrument dominates, right? You're blending it together and there's different parts and pieces, right? So if you segment your life into separate compartments, it's really hard to blend them together and have harmony. Instead, you might view the important pieces of your puzzle as one unit with several parts, right? So for example, you could share the ups and downs with your kids. They could cheer you on business-wise, you know, keep them in, engaged and involved. Conversely, at work, you might share the latest kid story. I've done that tons of times. Uh, and sometimes that's a pretty funny belly laugh for coworkers, right? Kids do the darndest things. Um, it's, it's when, not if, the two parts collide, each part is aware of and supportive of the, of the other, which makes it much easier to find harmony. And so one of the things we have to do is we have to educate and teach those people that are around us. We're not talking about the whole world but we're talking about your family. We're talking about your employees. We're talking about your service providers. We're talking about your clients. You're talking about defining what's an emergency. That's always, that's what I hear all the time. But what about if there's an emergency? Well, you know, the reality is, you know, sometimes there are emergencies, right? If the house is on fire or somebody gets hurt, then, you know, drop everything and go take care of it. But the reality is the house isn't on fire that often and people don't get hurt every day. And so you really have to decide, you know, what really constitutes an emergency. And then you have to educate and teach your, your family, your stakeholders, your employees, your service providers. All right. So the other thing is to be really authentic. It, it's hard to try to be two different people, a person at work and a different person at home. So be authentic. Be who you are in every situation. You'll have a lot less stress. You'll have a lot more peace and harmony in your whole life instead of just parts of it. So you got to understand who you are. 
What makes you tick? What makes you happy? What gives you joy? You are unique. Understand your unique identity. And if you want some help or guidance in this, we have a bunch of assessments that help do this, whether it's DISC or Strengths Finders or Colby, or there's a whole bunch of them that we use. Um, and we're happy to do that. If you put something in the chat or you send us an email, we're happy to sh share that information with you. Um, but authenticity builds trust. When you're authentic, you create a sense of trust with others because they know they're interacting with a real you, not a facade. It improves relationships. Authenticity fosters deeper, more meaningful relationships because people feel they can connect with you on a genuine level. It boosts self-confidence, right? Being true to yourself can help you feel more confident in your abilities, your opinions, and your decisions. It enhances creativity, right? It frees you from the constraints of trying to fit into a certain mold. You can just be you, express your unique creativity. And it increases happiness. Living authentically can bring a sense of fulfillment and contentment because you're living in alignment with your values and your beliefs. So it builds trust, improves relationships, boosts self-confidence, enhances creativity, and increases happiness. So you think we ought to be authentic? I think that's probably a good idea. Now, it's a give and take, right? Sometimes you have to work long days. And sometimes you have to give more than average hours to your work. But in those times, you have to readjust the expectations, your expectations and your family's expectations, your customers, that, that that's what it's going to take. Because at another point in time, maybe you can give a little bit more to your family. Take off and go see that football game. Take off and go see your daughter's dance recital. So it is a give and take, right? You're in business for a reason. You set up your entrepreneurial role, whatever you decided to pr prove. You're, you're in business for a reason. And a lot of times it's, you know, you're making the investment today for a long-term return, long-term return on investment. But you still have to have a life, right? We want to have life. Because if you don't have the life that supports your business, that's where those things like depression and burnout and substance abuse and mental health, all of that stuff comes into play if you don't have that balance, that harmony. So it does have a give and take. It does have a give and take. All right, we talked about communicating clearly. Now, we talked about educating and teaching your family and your friends and your coworkers and your employees and your your customers can communicate clearly, right? Uh, you know, I've been in situations, I'm certain you have, where the company culture is come in early, leave late, work hard all the time, accomplish your sales goals. And for a lot of small business, that demand is on you. It's on your shoulders to make sure that the business thrives. And since you're the one that's running the ship, you have to communicate clearly with your partners, your employees, your family, even yourself. You got to kind of own it. Provide vocal and written insight into how you expect to achieve harmony in your life. Write it down and then communicate these so that you clearly set those expectations. Really important. And ultimately, what you have to do, you know, is if you don't commit to harmony, it's not going to happen. All those other things that we just talked about, you can say you're going to do those. But if you don't commit to harmony, it's just not going to happen. Jim Collins um, wrote Good to Great and um, several other really strong business books in his study of top companies found that there are two types of CEOs, you know, executives in great companies. Type one executives make work their life. Type two executives have other passions and interests outside of the office demands. If you want the latter, if you want outside interests, family relationships, you want to avoid burnout long, you know, just deal with it. You know, then you have to commit to en enabling harmony. Now, I really like this picture. And, and for whatever reason, I mean, it's just rocks on top of rocks. But that balance thing, right? Little rocks, big rocks, little tiny rocks. They're all set just in the right place. And it sort of gives me a sense of peace, right? Okay, so now we're going to take a look at how, you know, business owners, people that are really in this thing are dealing with it, um, how they're dealing with it, and and share what their tips and ideas are. So real life acts, the real, <laughs> real life examples. And we're going to talk about focusing on equilibrium instead of balance, right? It's not balance, it's not 50 50, it's equilibrium. You know, the water goes up and it goes down, it goes up and it down, right? The ship sails up and down with the waves. That's the equilibrium. All right. So Nelly here, you know, basically she's saying, hey, don't focus on having an equal 50 50 balance. We were talking about this before, it doesn't work that way goes up and down. Sometimes your personal life's going to get in the way. Sometimes you got to deal with it. And sometimes business is going to take a lot. It's all about communication, making sure people understand what's going on. 
and commitment, that commitment to, to harmony, right? Every day is a little bit different, um, but we need it to, to, to balance out to the extent that's equilibrium, right? So we're taking care of our family, we're taking care of our relationships. Okay, if you're an entrepreneur, service professional, career person, um, there's no such thing as perfection. Not, not ever. What we have to do is embrace failure. And if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a solopreneur, if you're starting your own business, guess what? You're gonna you're gonna fall down a lot. You're gonna fail a lot. In fact, you know, Jim Collins says fail faster, right? The more you fail, the more the faster you figure out the thing that's right, right? The more Thomas Edison said it's gonna take a thousand tries, took a th they they commented it took 10,000 tries for him to uh invent the light bulb. And when he commented back, he said, Well, it took me 9,999 times to do it wrong. I finally got it right. Um, just understand you have to be, you got to be tolerant, right? And not just you, but your employees too, right? Nobody's perfect. Um, you want, you want to be a great leader, great dad, great wife, great mom, great friend. It's hard. It's not easy. You get the demands up and down, but you're going to, you're going to learn from all of those mistakes and those errors. There's no such thing as failure. There's just lessons. Now, lessons, right? So if we don't learn from our mistakes, then we're on the failure to learn curve and we're doomed, destined to repeat those, right? Um, for example, if you're, and if you're a new entrepreneur, right? And say you might have a real strong talent, a uh, real strong skill, but that doesn't mean you have all the parts and pieces to run a build. Do you know how to do your accounting? Do you know how to do sales? Do you know how to do marketing? Um, strategic planning, you know, all of those areas. You're probably good at some parts. That's why you decided to run your business. Um, but understanding all those parts and pieces to create, you know, success, sometimes it takes a little while, right? So maybe you don't know anything and, and you could work lots and tons and tons of hours and get you that, get you some money. But, but if you look at Sam's comment here, he says, hey, when I was doing that, I lost my friends. They'd moved on. The family grew bitter. Is that what you want? Or do we want to focus in on harmony, right? Equilibrium, keeping people involved, keeping people engaged, um, and making sure that we're we're spending those time with those people that we love, those relationships that are really important. Okay, now another thing the entrepreneur hat typically does is they try to do it all by themselves, right? So 82% of business owners are working 40 plus hours per week. Only half of them want to be. Well, I got to be honest with you. I I, I don't know that 40 hours, I, 50 hours is pretty normal, pretty common. And business owners, you know, 10 hours a day, not totally unusual. Um, the best way to reduce your workload and get some more time to spend with the people you love that you care about is by delegating those tasks. Now, again, if you're not clear on what the delegating process is and how to do that effectively, reach out. We've got tools to help you with that. Um, you don't have to do it yourself. And, and that's where stress really lies in, Right. You want to focus in on doing those things that you do well, that only you can do. Those are the highest value tasks. And then we want to make sure that we get other people around you. And today you can get virtual assistance. You can, you don't have to hire 40 hours. There's all kinds of different ways to do this. Um, put together a strategic plan that allows you to, you know, offload those low value tasks so that you free up your time and you can focus in on the highest value tasks. Uh, this is my favorite slide out of the whole presentation. Say no and keep saying no. You know, when you say no, you're saying no to one thing, typically. When you say yes, you're saying yes to a whole lot of things. And Chris here says it just right. Eliminate. If it isn't a hell yes, then it's a no. So if it's not an enthusiastic, emphatic yes, 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 then just say no. Just say no. You can do it later. No doesn't mean never. No doesn't mean forever. You can always tackle it later. You can always do something later. But right now, today, when you have to make this decision, if it's not a hell yes, if it's not as exciting, it's not enthusiastic, if it's if it's not doing its thing for you, then you got to say no. All right, and we want to be intentional and realistic. Oh, we lost our picture of Aaron here. Sorry. Um, you know, schedule your time together, whether it's a date or a vacation. Um guard that time carefully, right? That's a commitment to you. That's a commitment to your family. It's a commitment to your mental health. It's a commitment to your physical health. Guard that time. It's untouchable. You're going to spend hours and hours and hours at work. Guard the time with your family. Guard the time with the relationships. 
right? There's no business that can trump that pre-scheduled time. Now, I will tell you, there's always those emergencies, right? If the house is on fire, somebody gets hurt, somebody gets an automobile accident, you got to drop it, you got to go take care of it. But that's the only thing that's going to pull you out of that. Right. And then, you know, Sam here, who talked earlier about working 16 to 18 hours and losing his friends and his family becoming better, he's saying, like, hey, look, I learned this. Let me share that with you. Right. Humans were created to be relational. Relationships provide the support, the love, the emotional stability that helps get you through the rough patches of both life and business. If you don't have those relationships, it's just on your own and it's just, it's brutal. Right. And there's still a struggle. Sam still struggles. There's no perfect algorithm, but you want to make sure that you're investing in people, that you're you're creating that equilibrium, that you've committed to harmony so that you can serve those people that you love, your family, your friends. Money comes and goes. Relationships, a lot harder to deal with, right? And, and finding good relationships is hard and you want to maintain them, you want to keep them, and it takes time and effort to nurture, right? Um, Keep the quality of your business high. This is last line here. Keep the quality of your business high and the quality of your relationships even higher. I mean, that's that's it. That's the Sam here is the 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 proof. He's he's been both places. Right? Same thing, keeping your eye on the real bottom line. Ask yourselves if I say yes to this task or activity, what, what am I going to get back? Is that return worth it to you? And again, not like I'm going to get back pennies on the dollar, but I or or you know, three and four and five. Let's let's make it a hell yeah, right? With relationships, the return isn't isn't financial. Um, you have this ability to give non-monetary rewards. So when we talk about generosity, and generosity is really important to me, it's not just money. It's time. It's talent, your wisdom, your experience. You might be able to help somebody, you know, just with your time and your talent. And obviously, if you have some money and you can afford to be generous with it, then terrific, right? Money does a lot of good. But you don't have to have money to be generous. You can donate your time. You can serve. When you combine time and talent, you make a bigger impact. And if you if you combine time and talent and money together, then you make a giant impact. <laughs> so yes, I'm working from home. And yes, that's the dog. All right. Um, so you've heard from some you know, people that are out there experiencing it, sharing their wisdom, their experience. It's really important to understand that these people have been there. They're, they're telling you what, what's what, right? But one of the things you can do that's really helpful, because but you know, the reality is there's still a lot of things to take care of if you're a business owner, right? So becoming more mobile, right? Being able to do stuff on the run, do stuff in your car, do stuff while you're waiting in the line at the coffee shop. This is going to make you more effective. Becoming more mobile. You know, these these cell phones that we have in our hand, I I I didn't I grew up in the 70s and the 80s. You know, we still had when I was a kid, still had rotary dial phones. Um, and now you've got the equivalent of a gigantic computer in your hand with your phone. Just just remarkable. Right, so you've got your calendar, maybe you have a you have uh, contacts, um, there's all kinds of things you can do with your phone. And there's so many mobile apps, you can't even think about it. So, so go more mobile. That's really a key component. Take vacations. Take vacations. Right? I love this picture. Right? Dad and his daughter. It's so, this is it. This is what life's about. Right? I know you got to make some money. You got to live. You got to pay the bills. You got to have a house. You know, whatever you're doing that. Right? But, just take vacations. Make this event happen for you. All right. When we talk about the entrepreneur career parent, right? So this is a hard one, right? We want to separate personal and professional funds. Like if I'm in the personal space, this is, you know, I'm going to be focused on personal. If I'm in the professional, I'm going to be focused on professional. But don't neglect yourself. Right? If you don't take care of yourself, you're never going to be able to serve others. You're never going to be the best you can be at serving others. Right? Treat your home office like an office. Split up the tasks and be flexible. Don't be afraid to say no. In fact, I need you to get really good at saying no. And then outsource. 
Today, with the internet, man, we can outsource everywhere. You can get, you can buy four hours of virtual assistant time today, very inexpensively. Outsource. Get other people to do the low-value tasks. Get other people to do the things that you're not good at. Can you learn them? Yeah, but think about the amount of time and the energy and the effort to learn that and then become good at it, which is a whole other story. Um, so make sure that you outsource. And then create fluidity. Fluidity is that equilibrium, right? So you can you can shift from business to home, the personal back to business, the right particular work at the right time. All right, here's the entrepreneur's life challenge or the career professional's life challenge. This is your homework for this event, right? Just do this. This is a little thing uh, that's going to make a big difference, right? So it's about taking action. This is what you can do. So the life challenge is, is very simply, just write down the parts of your life that need to be in harmony. Write down the parts of your life that need to be in harmony and then draw a pie chart that represents how you feel harmony is right now. And in three months, after you've focused, after you've committed, and I gotta be honest with you, just thinking about this is gonna make a difference. Just spending time thinking about wanting more harmony makes a difference. It, it activates your mind to move in this direction. It's like a goal setting is like a homing pigeon. It just goes in that direction. So after three months, after you've started working on better harmony, look at the paper and see what's different. And then do this exercise regularly because you're going to find out, hey, you can get your business done. You don't have to sacrifice your friends. You don't have to sacrifice your family. You don't have to miss your kids' dance recital. You'll figure it out if you focus and you commit to harmony. You got to stay accountable, right? And so, so when you do that little pie chart, probably want to share that with somebody else, maybe somebody at the office, maybe your wife, maybe you you know somebody at home. Stay accountable. Ask the people that are closest to you to hold you accountable. Uh, and then listen to, you know, get some feedback. It's, listen to their perspective. Um, you're going to hear the harmony a lot more quickly and a lot more meaningfully. Personal relationships. You know, don't forget to keep your focus on the strength and solidarity of your personal relationships. When the going gets tough and you don't get to decide when the going gets tough, these are the people who are going to help you get through and then when the going gets good, they'll also be the ones to celebrate your success. Now, as I said before, I said, hey, you got to get mobile, right? Get mobile. The other way you could do this, because you still have a lot of tasks, right, is to automate it. And so you can automate it with a tool called Keep. And I just want to introduce this to you. Um, basically, you can organize all of your info. You can make sure that you get your follow-ups done, close more leads, Automate daily work. This is all automation, right? So, so saving you time so, so you can get more done and spend more time with your family, right? You can get paid, process invoices, process payments. Uh, you can impress your clients, right? Keep does all of these things. It's really pretty cool. And right now, there's a 14-day free trial. Keep.com free trial. If you let me know that you're interested in this, I can send you a link to set yourself up for the free trial. You don't even need a credit card. You get it right away. Now, the reality is, that you're probably not going to uh, launch, you know, all of the things that you can do and keep in two weeks. But what you will get is access to a bunch of videos and a bunch of training material to find out how this stuff works and what it can do for you. So you can explore whether this makes sense for you. I know it does for me. I use Keep. I've uh, been using it since 2018. It's gigantic when it comes to making a difference in your daily life, in your personal life, allowing you to get things done, still spend time with your family. So free trial. I, I just encourage you to check it out. Um, if you don't like it, that's no big deal. If there is anyone, we'll reach back out after a couple of weeks and and uh, see if you have any questions. All right. So free trial, sign up. All right. So at Keep, you know, here at Lifetime Generosity Coaching, we've adopted their theme, We Dream Big, right? Keep, they empower the entrepreneurial spirit by believing in people and championing their dreams. Their values are in harmony with Business Wits Lifeshine Generosity Coaching Program. Keep going. All right, lastly, I just want to say thank you. Thanks for, thanks for being here. Um, 
keep going, keep serving, keep growing. Thanks to uh, Terry and Nathan. Thank you all for being here. Um, if you have any questions, feel, please feel free to reach out, send me a note, email, text, whatever. Um, I'm going to make this as we were, we're recording this and we'll get this out to all the people that registered, whether you were able to attend or not. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll let you go.